Hello everyone, welcome to episode 5 of my C3PO build. Uh, we're going to be working with the head. Specifically, we're going to be working on this thing. This is a base station that I built that operates the pan and tilt mechanism. Uh, you can put this on a tabletop and um, he'll be fully functional. It's got some switches on the front. It's got some electronics in the back that you can see through. Um, warning signs as well just for safety. And uh, in this episode, I'm gonna show you how I built this unit, as well as I did the wiring and the programming and the sound effects for 3PO. So uh, let's get started. Here's the uh, base station for C3PO. Uh, this has um, turned out to be a little bit more than what I had thought of at first. Uh, I just wanted a box to hold the head, uh, maybe put the electronics inside temporarily, but um, it just led to more than that. This would be a great idea, I think, for conventions where you can have a bust of a droid uh, just sitting on there and activated. So I made it out of wood on my CNC as well as some 3D printing. I'm just going to show you um, uh, just how it comes apart here and how it's assembled. So it's made basically out of half inch and one quarter inch MDF. So uh, there's a 3D printed center for the neck to sit into. These are quarter inch, the base is half inch, and um, the top is a quarter inch. And then I just cut the circle out of the top. Uh, the back fits on like this. And originally the electronics was going to be housed inside. So um, the top fits on top. There's some um, inserts for the M4 bolts that hold the top in. I just glued them into a hole in the very top. And then the neck's going to sit right on top like that. I'm just going to glue it on and I just used my Cricut to uh, cut out the circle uh, to center it properly before I glue it. I've got holes in the front part there for a switch, an LED, and the power down um, push button switch as well. It says C3PO activate power down and protocol droid. The sides are all CNC'd, and there's a bevel on there. That's why I kind of wanted to 3D print the front, and then you'd get a little bit more detail as well. Just hand painted all that on there. I sprayed it with black and then with some brown rust and um, those are color cut in with just a bit on the CNC but you could always 3D print that as well. So that's where the circuit board was going to go originally um, but then I decided it could be kind of nice to see the circuit as well uh, in an enclosure on the very back so um, that's what I did. Uh, I made a um, 3D printed housing that will fit right here. This is what the housing looks like. And it just gets screwed on and then there's going to be a plexiglass cover for it. And then you just undo the plexiglass to reprogram anything. Here's the completed uh, version of my base station. Uh, as you can see, I've got uh, a little bit more weathering done on it. I just added some um, black uh, uh, water mixable um, oils to uh, the corners here uh, with some light browns and then I added my switch this is my power switch there's a little LED here that shows you that power is on and over on this side here is a push button switch for the power down and uh, I've got er everything installed inside for the pan mechanism and then I've got uh, his eyes are just sitting right here because um, the neck's going to come up on top here and then all the wires are going to feed through um, the slot in in the neck um, for his face as you can see the sides here these are all CNC'd um, I chose that over 3d printing just for fun and then I put the electronics on to the back 
So I've got, I made an electronics board for it and it's sitting in there. I'll show you more about that in a minute. Added some warning labels on the side here. And to get access to this, you just take these four uh, M3 bolts off and then you can reprogram it, change the SD card out if you want to. And then you plug in the power jack right in there. So um, that's what it looks like now. And uh, my next step uh, will be to just attach the um, face to it and wire it all up. But uh, coming up uh, shortly here, I'm going to show you the electronics and the board and my prototyping design. And uh, all of this will be released hopefully in my next video when I show you the completed uh, bust that's functional uh, with the animatronics. So let's move into the next section now. Here's the <clears throat> jumbled mess of uh, breadboards and uh, my mock-up of my circuit uh, as I was building it. It's quite a disaster, but luckily I changed all that and added it to a perforated board um, so that it's a little bit more organized. And uh, what that looks like is this. So sorry for those of you that are really good at this and can come up with an excellent circuit diagram and then have a professional board made up. I'm quite not there yet, so I'm still soldering onto these things. But what I did do is um, buy some um, female uh, headers here so that I can just put some, make my own sockets. And that way I can plug in my Arduinos and the stepper motor drivers and the DF player in case something happens to one of them, I can just pop them out. Uh, I used to call the shake and nod. The shake was the pan, uh, left and right and nod was up and down. So that's the tilt. Uh, this, these are terminal strips here to, for the button. That's why it says butt there. And uh, the speaker gets attached here. And uh, I have my uh, Hall effect sensors hooked up to these three um, little sections here for these terminal strips. And then I made a four pin header here and here to plug in my stepper motors. And I just color coded them so that I plug it in properly. Um, each stepper motor driver needs one of these capacitors that I've got uh, listed in the bill of materials. And then here is my a buck converter it takes 12 volts in puts out 5 volts and i made a strip here for just a common negative um, and a common positive 5 volts rail um, so i can easily wire up things that i need to and then way over here it's kind of hard to see i've got uh, the 12 volts coming in i got a 12 volt positive and negative for the stepper motor drivers as well so once that's all um, uh, plugged in there um, I can just pop in my chips on top. So there's the DF player, the stepper motor drivers. This one doesn't have the heat sink on it yet. Uh, and then the two nanos that control the pan and the tilt. And then from there, <clears throat> underneath, I just have um, the wiring. It's hardwired in. And I wish I had, you know, I could make professionals um, boards. I thought this was going to be a one-off, but I might have another one for my full-size uh, C-3PO in the future. Uh, here's what it looks like in the enclosure. So I've got uh, plexiglass over the outside. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to show the electronics as well. I turn the whole thing um, 90 degrees and then my relay board for activating the eyes is just screwed on over there. So I just have to take off these four M3 bolts, and then I can unplug my um, TF player SD drive um, card and then uh, reprogram it if I have to. So um, that's what my board looks like. I'm just going to show you the circuit uh, now. All right, here is um, what my circuit looks like, the uh, circuit diagram. Uh, I've got uh, my two nanos right here. I've labeled them pan and tilt. They drive the mechanisms. Um, so let's take a look at the pan nano first. So when the sketch is downloaded onto here, um, it sends signals to the stepper motor driver. 
This is the capacitor I talked about earlier. And then the stepper motor is wired up like this um, to the driver. Uh, it requires five volts here and here to operate, but then it requires 12 volts as well, right across here and here um, for the motor itself. Um, so that's one job for the Pan Nano. Uh, the other job for the Pan Nano is the Hall Effect sensor. So it's hooked up here to pin seven, looks like. Um, and it uh, stops, it's the limit switch for that stepper motor. Um, and it requires five volts as well. Uh, the other job for this Nano, it does a lot, uh, is it operates the DF player um, with the audio clips. So I'll show you that in just a minute. And then um, it also um, activates the eyes. Now, the eyes are the six LEDs. I, I maybe could have uh, driven them right off the Nano. I wasn't sure how much current they would draw. <clears throat> I didn't want to burn out a pin on here. So, and I had a bunch of these kicking around. It's just a relay, it's a five volt relay, and it can power up the eyes and a ton more if you needed it to. But um, I've got a output from here going to here. This clicks on, turns on the eyes when it's supposed to. <clears throat> so that's what the Nano um, for the pan mechanism does. It does quite a bit. Uh, the one for the tilt, all it's responsible for is operating the um, stepper driver for the tilt system as well as the tilt hall effect sensor here and that's about it now between these two they're connected from digital pin uh, two and that goes to a power down switch through a 1k resistor and when you press that switch it powers down talk more about that in a second and then down here i have my buck converter it takes 12 in 12 volts in at one amp in and then five volts out so that's basically the wiring diagram for it. And uh, now I'd just like to talk a little bit about the sound clips and uh, how I did all of those. Okay, here are my uh, audio clips for C3PO. I started off by using the 15 or so that were available online through the Facebook group and um, they were great. And I got a little bit tired of them hearing the same ones over and over again. So I I went online and I spent a few hours and I created about 15 more. So uh, now I have about 31 clips that he cycles through. So basically what happens is when you activate C3PO, um, he will say clip number 32. Now notice how I've uh, numbered these. I numbered them all from 001, 0001 all the way to 0034. Uh, it's important to number them correctly like that. And then if you're going to use these clips and you're going to put them on an SD card, you need to drag them over one at a time. Even though they're numbered like this, they don't often uh, play in the right order. Uh, they play in the order that they were placed onto the SD card. So that's important. Anyways, um, there's three clips here, these bottom three, that he only says once. And basically the others, other ones he cycles through. So you turn them on. He will say clip number 32, I am C3PO. His eyes will turn on and then he is, his pan and tilt mechanism will um, start off at their zero mark and then he'll go into random mode. And in random mode right now in the code, I've got it set so that every nine seconds he will say something. And he'll say one of these clips. So he'll randomly start anywhere in this list up to 31. Say he starts at um, number 19 He'll say that clip nine seconds later, he'll say the next one nine seconds later, the next one and so on and so on. When he gets down to 31, he'll start all the way back up at one again. Now, um, what I wanted him to be able to do is that when I shut him off, I, I don't want him looking in a weird direction. So um, I've programmed it so that if you hit the power down button, um, what he will do is he will, you will hear a power down um, sound effect which is right here he'll play that once and then he'll say if you'll not be needing me I'm going to power down so uh, he says that and then his eyes shut off and his head moves to first of all his head moves to the center position so he's looking right at you then his eyes shut off and he basically is inactive for about 10 to 15 seconds or so so in that amount of time if you don't want him to turn back on you just shut off the switch and he's ready to go for next time otherwise when you leave him 
what he's going to do is he's going to reactivate himself and he's just going to um, start going through these clips again. So um, I'm going to make these available to you once I'm done setting everything up. Probably be uh, in the next video, hopefully, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, thanks. Well, folks, that's uh, episode number five. I hope you enjoyed watching how I made the base station and did all the wiring for this. In episode six, we're going to be putting it all together. You'll see uh, animated C-3PO, hopefully, and you'll look a little bit different. This is um, what I've been doing in the meantime. I've been uh, I printed off another head. Uh, he and his maker look very similar, so uh, he's getting there. I've been using this uh, primer sealer. It's um, duplicolor, and it's been working out pretty good. And I've been taking it down with about a thousand grit. Once I get all the little imperfections out, I'm going to cover it all up with um, Duplicolor uh, gloss finish and then follow that up with uh, Montana Gold uh, spray paint. It's all coming together. Hope you can um, join me again next episode where um, we have this functioning C3PO on the base station. Thanks for watching and please stick around for the thought for today.